Good afternoon, everyone. In today's 13th emergency <coughs> teach-in, we will be discussing the idiot topic. Had it not been for October 7th, none of this would have happened. Join our illustrious team of experts, the hosts of the podcasts, Free Arabs and, which will probably never be recorded. Ahlan wa sahlan, Sinan Antun, our cultural landscape edit uh, expert, Adil Iskandar, our media landscape expert, and myself, Bassam Haddad, our social science expert. Welcome Adil and Sinan and myself to our regularly scheduled emergencies. Today, we discuss the topic, had it not been for October 7th, none of this would have happened. Our humanity aside, we are fed up with the myopic view of supporters of Palestine in harping about Israel's defensive strategy. Had it not been for the attacks of October 7th, the 27,375 days of Israeli occupation, dispossession, ethnic cleansing, home demolitions, illegal racist settlements, administrative detention, killing, maiming, raping, torturing, humiliating, and murdering that Israel carried out since 1948 wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So, s'il vous plaît, fuck off with your constant barrage of criticism and try to focus on the matters at hand and on the sequence that we have been observing for decades. Let me first start by introducing our culture landscape expert, Sinan Antoun, who will be addressing this matter. Sinan, can you please tell us why is it that had it not been for October 7th, I know, none of this would have happened. Thank you, Bassam. Um, you know, where to begin? Look, Israelis and their allies are right to claim that were it not for October 7th, none of what took place afterwards would have taken place. But the biased, unbalanced, and prejudiced media onslaught and the jarring shrieks of angry pro-Palestinian all over the world made so many forget the state of the world before October 7th or have terrified them and occupied their collective memory, displacing the truth and threatening it with annihilation and disappearance. So many are clamoring, genocide, scholasticide, and politicide. But what about memory side? The destruction and erasure of memory, the discursive bombing and starving of our collective memory of that pristine universe before October 7th, particularly in Palestine. Most of you, I'm going to be honest here, most of you are misreading the course of history by being hostage to a traditional linear trajectory. We will never grasp the enormity of October 7th unless we deploy a different prism and adopt a regressive perspective. Don't be fooled by progressive politics and all the shenanigans. October 7th destructive effects are hiding in plain sight. Can anyone in their right mind, doubt that October 7th caused the siege of Gaza and five or six wars. October 7th forced Israel to build the apartheid wall. October 7th caused the invasion of Ukraine and the invasion of Iraq. October 7th caused the first Gulf War in 1991 and the destructive sanctions that killed hundreds of thousands of Iraqi civilians. October 7th forced Fukuyama to write a book announcing the end of history as he knew it. Many Russians, and Bassam, could you please show the photograph I got from my friend at the KGB. Many Russians blame Hamas on October 7th for the collapse of the Soviet Union. Gorbachev was caught on a mic telling Putin about that. Saddam Hussein confessed to his captors that the only reason why he invaded Kuwait on the 8th of August, 1990, was because of October 7th. October 7th led to Iran and Iraq having an eight year long war. October 7th forced Israel to invade Lebanon and lay siege to Beirut and kill and wound 50,000 civilians. It resulted in the Lebanese civil war the 1956 tripart aggressions, the Vietnam War. But October 7th hurt the Palestinian people the most by forcing Zionist militias to carry out the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians in 1948. There is a straight line from October 7th to the Nakba. 
World War II, World War I, the partition of India. These are just a few examples. The Crusades, the Mongol invasion, and the fall of Baghdad, and the civil war between Al Amin and Al Ma'mun, the Sunni Shiite split, the Peloponnesian War, Socrates' death, Enkidu, Gilgamesh's friend in the Epic of Gilgamesh, died because of October 7th. I'm skipping because of time limitations, but I must mention what we all know. When dinosaurs were asked why they perpetrated barbaric violence against more vulnerable species, all except one said that it was October 7th. And when that one dinosaur, and please Bassam show us the, the clip, was subjected to enhanced interrogation, that dinosaur confessed as well that it was October 7th. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you, Bassam. Thank you very much, Sinan, for your interjection. This is pretty valuable stuff. Uh, I will now uh, turn to myself, the social science expert who will actually try to bring some scholarly perspective and historical perspective to our discussion of had it not been for the attacks of October 7th, none of this would have happened. There we go. Um, as a scholar, and I should say that um, I am very excited to be able to do this with you because I have been doing the uh, necessary research for this. As a scholar, uh, I will provide historical evidence for how October 7th explains Israel's defensive reaction from October 23 to March 2024. I will provide some slides with some very important quotations that demonstrate a very solid evidence for how October 7th caused everything that happened after it in terms of Israel's defensive reaction. First, let me say that um, Theodore Herzl, the father of modern political Zionism, referred to this in his diary, referred to Zionism's logical imperative about 1895. That's the 19th century, right? He wrote, we shall try to spirit the penniless Palestinian population across the border by procuring employment for it in the transit countries while denying it any employment in our country. Expropriation and the removal of the poor must be carried out discreetly and circumspectly. This is Theodore Herzl, the father of modern Zionism. The apple of my eye, Habibi Hui. In 1938, David Ben-Gurion, the man who, along with Theodore Herzl and Chaim Chaim Wiseman, was one of the progenitors of Israel, explicitly acknowledged the linkage between Zionism and expulsion, declared at a meeting of the Jewish agency, I support compulsory transfer. I do not see anything immoral in it. Akidla. He also said Zionism is a transfer of the Jews. Regarding the transfer of the Arabs, this is much easier than any other transfer. Habibi Ben-Gurion, Anjad. In 1931, revisionist Zionists led by firebrand Vladimir Jabotinsky became a major force with the slogan, here we go, just to make sure we are on the same page. The slogan, the, the aim of Zionism is gradually to convert the land of Israel, including Transjordan, into a self-governing Jewish commonwealth resting on a permanent Jewish majority. Islam Jabotinsky. On December 20th, 1940, Joseph White confided in his diary a conversation with a Jewish National Fund colleague. Amongst ourselves, it must be clear that there is no room for both peoples in this country. There is no room for both peoples in this country, 
مش مزح No development will bring us closer to our aim to be an independent people in this small country. After the Arabs are transferred, the country will be wide open for us. With the Arabs staying, the con- and the country will remain narrow and restricted. The only way is to transfer the Arabs from here to neighboring countries, all of them, except perhaps Bethlehem, Nazareth, and Old Jerusalem. See how thoughtful. Not a single village or single tribe must be left, and only then will the country be able to absorb millions of Jews and a solution will be found to the Jewish question. There's no other solution. For real. Dakhil Ainu. Finally, our beloved, dearly beloved, peacemaker, former Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Yitzhak Rabin recalls And I quote, We walked outside, Ben Gurion accompanying us. Yigal Alon repeated his question What is to be done with the Palestinian population? Ben Gurion waved his hand in a gesture which said, Drive them out. I agree. Ishaq Rabin wrote, it was essential to drive the inhabitants out. I agree, actually. It's obvious and reasonable, and we appreciate the honesty. Let's move once more to Israel's mathematical narrative. If history is not compelling, I know a lot of people like math, so we'll move to math. If on the one hand, no atrocity that Israel committed can justify the attacks of October 7th, and if on the other hand, the attack of October 7th can justify any atrocity that Israel commits, then we can easily figure out that this formula cancels out October 7th. This leaves us mathematically with the conclusion that Israel itself is an atrocity. Yeah. Let's look at this a bit more closely for those who are doubting the math. Israel's mathematical narrative formula suggests that no Israel atrocity equals after October 7th, and then October 7th equals any Israel atrocity. It means that October 7th is both equal to the existence of Israel atrocities as well as to the absence of Israel atrocities. Following therefrom, and according to Israel's narrative and practice, the existence of October 7th and the absence of October 7th do not affect Israel's actions. Thus, plus October 7 minus October 7th equals zero. This leaves us with no Israel atrocity equals October 7th and October 7th equal any Israeli atrocity. If you cross out the either side of the formula from the left up top and the right at the bottom, or from the left up top, from the right up top and the right at the bottom, it leaves us with Israel is actually itself atrocity. Finally, And I know that some of you might not care for math or science. Some of you might not care for history. But surely, everybody cares about God. Right? It's important to recognize that the Bible tells us what God did on the first seven days when he created the world. Yes, apparently it's a he, judging from how the world turned out. But if you pay attention, you'll find what is missing in this narrative. So, here we go. On day one, there was light and darkness. On day two, there's sky and sea. Day three, there was land. Day four, there was sun and moon. Day five, birds and fish. Day six, animals, man and woman. Not a lot of binary stuff. Day seventh, God rests. Hmm. Not really. On the seventh day, God created October 7th as the beginning of all time. For those of you who are not paying attention. Basically, everything you think of and you know about time and the world before October 7th is not real. And one more thing. Immediately after creating October 7th, 
he condemned Hamas. Otherwise, he would have been totally fired. With this, I conclude my discussion of had it not been for October 7th, none of this would have happened. And I would like to now turn to our cultural media landscape specialist, Adil Iskandar. Adil, can you share with us your thoughts on how, had it not been for October 7th, none of this would have happened? <clears throat> Thank you so much, Bassem. Thank you, Sunan, for your incredible insight. Um, you know, we've, we've approached this from a, different per, a series of different perspectives. I want to start off first and foremost for those who have done their homework and reviewed the previous emergency teachings, especially the one entitled Is Anything or Anyone Not Hamas? Shutar Bravo. Of course, you will recall that we found that everyone born on October 7th is Hamas, from Yo Yo Ma to Weird Al Yankovic. Now that you've successfully completed that module in the curriculum, we can confidently move into the more advanced and abstract examination of October 7th not merely as an embodiment of Hamas, but as something more glaring, daring, wearing, snaring, overbearing. Who wrote this crap? Um, someone shuffled my papers. Sorry, folks. Um, anyway, um, as media scholars, we sometimes end up examining mindless, mundane, miserably moronic questions. But today, we do the opposite. We explore the most complicated, complex, confusing, and confounding paradox of quantum physics, time and temporality. Okay, so I think we can assume that time exists. We see it on, a, on the sequential landmark dates in the only viable historical record, the Azraeli calendar of Palestinian erasure, 1917, 1948, 1956, 1967, 1982, 2006, 2012, 2014, 2018, 2021, and 2023. It's a tongue twister. But you could see time progressing in a particular way, in the same way that uh, uh, Sinan explained. So while time appears to move forward, elapsing and expiring day after day, the day after the next, on October 7th, 2023, something extraordinary happened. Time prolapsed, then relapsed, and then collapsed. Not like daylight saving time when you sleep in or wake up an hour earlier or later. Instead, more like what non-academics such as yourselves describe as time standing still. Think of your first kiss. Well, you know, October 7th is like an infinite number of first kisses, of death, of course. So many kisses of death, in fact, that October 7th not only stands outside of time, time stands outside of October 7th, literally outside, knocking on the door, but not to be let in. Time effectively stops existing entirely. October 7th becomes at once all of time and yet leaves you with no time at all. This is what physicists like Stephen Hawking refer to as singularity. I should have like a single finger quote. Singularity. A singularity happens when the property of a system becomes infinite, when all of matter in the universe is compressed into one entity. Examples of this singularity you might be familiar with include, let's say, when Thomas Friedman is at his flatulent, I mean immaculate zenith, or perhaps when Kim Kardashian actually breaks the internet, um, or perhaps when the dude's rug gets peed on in The Big Lebowski, or perhaps when you discover that Bruce Willis is a ghost in the sixth sense, or when Darth Vader tells Luke Skywalker that he is in fact his father, or perhaps when E.T. the extraterrestrial eventually phones home or when Rocky runs up that flight of stairs and stands supreme atop that, or when Neo from the Matrix is capable of dodging bullets, or when Alan Dershowitz is firing on all cylinders and from all orifices, or perhaps finally, when even the most sophisticated telescopes, the James Webb Space Telescope and the Electron Microscope are unable to detect any trace of Palestinian suffering or death. These are all landmark examples of singularity. But to understand this concept better, let's take a closer look at singularity and how it works. Basem, if you don't mind showing us the figure here. <clears throat> As you can see in this highly simplified diagram of mathematician and physicist Roger Penrose's depiction of singularity, singularity is when the events of October 7th defy time and space by absorbing and subsuming all of human history 
in the same way that Sinan explained. Thereby, all remaining matter in the universe, the only matter left, and the only matter that matters is Israeli feelings. All of time and space is subsumed by Israeli feelings. And the only authentic vantage point to observe this phenomenon is actually the New York Times. Not just the first draft of history, but the first draft of time. Hence the times. Singularity is only possible in two conditions, not three. The first, you must travel at the speed of light. When an object is traveling at the speed of light, singularity is possible. Examples of traveling at the speed of light includes the speed at which US military aid shipments arrive to Israel. And the second instance is when you're at the center of a black hole, which brings us to this teaching's scientific revelation. October 7th is actually a black hole. But Sam, if you can show us the second diagram. In a black hole, all familiar characteristics, odor, luminosity, chemical composition, no longer exist. Yani balatame, as they say, rihabas. The only three properties retained by black holes are mass, spin, and electric charge. The singularity of October 7th black hole is clearly exhibited through these very three same characteristics. Mass in the form of mass extermination of Palestinians, spin in the form of the work of the Hasbara, and electric charge in the form of Netanyahu's killing machines of tanks, artillery, military aircraft, drones, etc. And of course, what we all are supposed to know, the defining feature of a black hole is a boundary in space and time in which matter and light can pass only inwards towards the black hole and nothing, not even light, can escape from inside. So the October 7th black hole sucks everything in and allows absolutely nothing to escape, exactly like Israel's siege of Gaza. Not a glimmer of light or a proton of hope. Like all black holes, all matter in the October 7th black hole is torn apart, absorbed into singularity. Therefore, October 7th is directly responsible for any and all tragedies across time. The 1931 China floods that claimed 4 million lives, the 1986 Chernobyl disaster, the breakup of the Spice Girls, the flooding of Burning Man, Kennedy's assassination, and Balfour signing a declaration. Further proof that October 7th is a date to end all dates, time stood still on October 7th, 1996, when Fox News Channel actually began its first broadcast. And again on October 7th, 2001, when the US and UK forces invaded Afghanistan, killing approximately 70,000 Afghans and, Palestine, and, and Pakistanis over the, over the years and leading to the longest uh, war in American history. <clears throat> now, but one, no one has depicted the impact of October 7th on existence quite like the artist Salvador Dali in his 1931 painting, Persistence of Memory. Now we finally know that he wasn't merely being surreal, rather just being real. In fact, following this meticulous study that I've just delivered to you, I can safely declare with certainty that, are you ready for this? Uh, hold the on, hold on. Hold October, on. take a breather. Are you ready? Yell. The attacks of, of October 7th would not have happened if it wasn't for the attacks of October 7th. I'll let you ponder this. Maybe we'll need a mathematical uh, discussion further down the line. We'll leave that to another teaching. Thank you so much for Simon Center. Thank you very much, Sinan and Adil. Sinan, our cultural landscape specialist and Adil, our media landscape specialist for your insightful comments on had it not been for October 7th, none of this would have happened. Before we break, let me ask you, is there anything else you'd like to share? Thank you, Bassem. I'm okay. I have to add that there is a consensus now among scientists and the dinosaur that we showed earlier that October 7th caused climate change and global warming. 
Thank you very much, Sinan, for this very important final intervention. We will leave you with the evidence that Sinan suggested. We will be back next week with our next installment of emergency teachings because we can predict emergencies one week ahead of time. And we will be addressing a very important topic in the most urgent manner. Assalamu alaikum and bonsoir. Oh.